Aloha everybody, this is Wyatt with Michael Lab Solutions and today we're in the lab and we're going to make some grain spawn. Today we're going to use rye berries, organic rye berries. Uh, we get these through like a market, Whole Foods or uh, one of the smaller local health food stores usually has it and you can order in bulk. Uh, it comes in 25 pound bags. Uh, there's a couple different kinds of brands but just find a good organic one and I was paying anywhere from around a dollar to maybe a dollar thirty a pound. So if you could find it around for a dollar or you know less than a dollar fifty, that's a pretty good deal. This is the grains uh, that we get through our local um, small health food market. Uh, it's Mountain High Organic Rye Berries. So let's just pour this in. Usually we do about a whole bag, which is 25 pounds, and it comes out to about 40. Uh, pounds of spawn uh, wet and after you autoclave it. So we're just going to dump it in here. Then we're going to grab our water and we're going to just uh, fill it up and then dump it out and then fill it up, dump it out, kind of strain it, swish it around. Uh, we got this super nice paddle. These are really helpful when you're doing big batches. Um, you, you know, you can get these at like a, a specialty uh, kitchen store or something. I think that's where we got this one. So let's just fill it up and we'll wash it just like rice. We're just going to kind of swish it around. And then I made this little screen. I just took a little piece of brass screen. I just put it right there to kind of get for any, uh, you know, uh, kernels from falling out. So you just tilt them. And the water's really dirty at first, so you want to, you know, do it uh, until it's uh, not so dirty. And you'll see a lot of floaters coming off and the black ones and dirty ones and stuff, so I just kind of let those go. So we'll do that a few more times and we'll just uh, wash them really well and get the water clean. And then we're going to uh, add some gypsum and we'll leave it overnight. Okay, so I've weighed out about 25 grams of uh, gypsum here and we're going to add this to um, our grains. And then we're going to put the lid on and we're going to leave it overnight and come back tomorrow and boil them. Okay, there you go. We'll leave them overnight and come back and boil them tomorrow. Hey, this is Wyatt with Michael Lab Solutions and now we're going to pour our grains into our boiling bucket. Uh, we're only doing this because our kettle right now is not working. It's not hooked up to a steam generator. So we're going to do it the old fashioned way. So let's go ahead and pour our grains in and then we'll put them on uh, the propane burner and then we'll boil them. So once we get them up to a boil, we want to leave them there for anywhere around 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I ch start checking them around then. Make sure that they're uh, soft but not too soft where they're getting mushy and falling apart and uh, we take them out right away and we're going to let them steam off to get off all of the surface moisture. We want them to retain the moisture inside but not be too wet um, on the outside because uh, once we cook our grains um, if they're too wet they'll get mushy and it will inhibit growth and uh, allow more bacteria and other contaminate growth. Um, so we want them to be a nice, fluffy, they don't want to stick together. Uh, and there's a little test we can do with a, um, a piece of paper towel or toilet paper where you can put some of the grains on there. And uh, when you take them away, you don't want a huge uh, water mark left behind. So let's get going. We'll pour them in and then we'll put them on the burner. <laughs> This pot has a basket in it. It makes it a lot easier for pulling the grains out once they're um, cooked. Uh, you don't have to slosh around uh, all that hot water. Uh, we're really trying to get a system down to where we're not having to do all this labor. Uh, we want it all to be in a tilt kettle. We can drain it into a strainer right here 
and then take them, put them into some sort of grain turning system um, that uh, allows them to wick off and dry off. But uh, we're not set up right now, so we're gonna do it old school. So we're gonna add a little bit more water to this to bring it up so we can boil it, and then we'll put it on the burner and boil it. So now that we have it filled up, we're gonna add uh, 10 more grams of gypsum, and we'll mix it up and turn it on. All right, let's fire her up. Now that we have the heat on, we're gonna let it get up to a boil and then we're gonna watch it closely for about 10 minutes and then check it and maybe give it a few more minutes till it's nice and uh, perfectly cooked. As these are cooking, you wanna come back to them often and give them a nice turn so they get a nice even cook. The ones on the bottom aren't cooking too much. And uh, so let's give them a good stir and then we'll let them get back and we'll check them again shortly. I really recommend getting one of these paddles. They're a, a lot of help and uh, they'll save you from burns and uh, they'll make the job a lot easier. Our grains are boiling, so uh, we've started a timer and now we're gonna give it a quick uh, turn. We'll leave the top off the, at this point and we'll just uh, monitor them and uh, check back, check one or two. Usually I take them out and uh, I'll chew on them and stuff and um, see how soft they are. And if they're kind of hard and dry on the inside, you want to let them go a little bit more. But if they're, you know, still crunchy and intact, but uh, moist on the inside, that's a good sign they're getting done. So we'll come back in a few minutes and check them again and then maybe take them off and uh, start drying them. So it's been about 11 minutes and we're going to uh, check them and then uh, probably take them off here. So usually I just take a few and you can see that they're starting to get uh, kind of, uh, I don't know if you can see that, they, they're, they're soft and um, you know, I eat some, I feel how tender they are, I uh, you can tell they kind of are starting to split apart and inside it's all, um, it's all one color instead of being more white when it's dry. So we're going to shut it off. And we're going to just pull the strainer pot out and then we're going to go put them on our drying rack. Here we are, we're just going to pull them out, let all the water drain. And you want to do this as quick as possible because when they're hot, they'll steam a lot more and you'll get a lot of that surface moisture off. Okay, so our normal drying tray is being used right now for something else. So we've got another screen here. This is just a, a, a stainless steel mesh screen. And uh, right now we, we don't have our, our full setup. So what we do is we just dump out the grains. Now be careful because they're really hot. You see how much steam is coming off of them? That's what we want. We want as much steam as possible to come off. So what we're going to do is once we have them all laid out, we're just going to move them around, move them around, get as much surface area open to let off steam. We want all the surface moisture to wick off. So what our next project we're going to be building is a, a, a grain dryer where we're going to have a stainless steel dr mesh drum and be able to dump all of the grains in there one time and it will be on a motor and turn and like a dryer basically. And that will uh, allow the, drains, the grains to turn and dry out and we don't have to do all this manual labor. Uh, it will save a lot of time and a lot of energy uh, and we'll get perfect grains every time. So we're going to come back to these and we're going to stir them every once in a while and we're going to keep moving them around until they kind of cool off and the steam stops coming off 
and then uh, we'll go and we'll do some other projects and we'll let them sit for a while and dry out coming back to them every so often and turning them after boiling your grains the water is great to save and use in the garden it's full of nutrients and uh, really gives your plants a boost once the grains are dry we'll then transfer them into our spawn bags these are the autoclavable bags with a filter patch breathable filter patch um, these are the extra large bags they hold about four to five pounds I usually like to fill them to that's what fits best into my particular autoclave so we're just going to fill them up it's usually like five scoops or so and then we'll bring them in and we will add a filter strip of breathable uh, Tyvex and then we'll fold them up and place them into our autoclave basket. So that's pretty good right there. We're going to do the rest of them and then we'll bring them inside and we'll show you how we fold them up.